This is going to be for a particular system owner who has a particular network configuration consisting of static IP addresses. And they're trying to test out nice ash OS before they start having to reconfigure their whole network to an operating system they don't know if they're going to use long term. So we're going to walk through slowly how to set up a static IP address with nice ash OS. Then we'll end with some of the downfalls. Finally, we'll ping the internet to check the connection. You've created a NiceHash OS bootable USB drive to evaluate whether NiceHash OS is right for you. Once NiceHash OS loads from the USB drive, you notice the connection status is disconnected. It won't connect to the network. And in this case, we're talking about a network that is configured with static IP addresses and does not have DHCP availability. And there's a couple of good articles that we will link in the video description below that walk through ways to get this resolved using some Linux or Linux commands to get around the static IP address issue. After NiceHash OS boots, it will finally load a minor overview screen. And that's going to tell you your NiceHash OS version, the minor version that's running, is the minor running, the connection status, the IP address, and then some of your rig information, the devices are installed in that rig, and then the bus number that correlates with each device. On that screen, you can see our connection status here is disconnected, and our IP address is blank, it's empty. And at the bottom, you can see to enter the shell, press control C. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna press control C, and you might need to press it a couple of times if it doesn't respond. And remember, this operating system runs from the volatile RAM memory, but press control C. It should take you to the shell, which is kind of like command prompt in Windows or PowerShell in Windows 10. Once we're here, we're gonna type IF config. That's gonna print out a list of network adapters that are installed in the system. We're gonna look for the one connected. In this case, it's network adapter that is labeled as ETH1. And we're looking at the HW address. That's the MAC address that we have set up in the router with a particular IP address reserved for its exclusive use. So what we have to do here is use some of these Linux commands to input that static IP address that we have reserved on the router for this network adapter. And how we're going to do that, now that we've identified the system given name of the network adapter, we're going to type sudo, which is going to give us some elevated privileges. And then we're going to type ifconfig space, and then type the system given name of the adapter, and in this case, eth1. And then we're going to space and type in the IP address that we have reserved on the router for this MAC address, for this network adapter space again and we're going to type the word up up enter as long as it goes to the next line and there's no error messages that should have taken that means our adapter static ip address should be saved in the system so now we're going to type sudo space route space add space default and then the abbreviation gw space gateway IP address for the router and that's usually the IP address that you use to access the router's administrative pages if you're using some default settings on a basic router it may be 192.168.0.1 or something like that then we'll press enter that should apply the default gateway to that network adapter or just basically to all the adapters then we're gonna type sudo echo quotation mark name server space 1.1.1.1 that's Cloudflare's name server so we're going to use those but you could use Google's 8.8.8.8 .8 or you could use OpenDNS or any other name server that you prefer and this step may not be necessary but we're going to do it anyways and the quotation type a space and then a greater than sign and then space again forward slash etc forward slash resolve resolv give it the extension dot c o 
N, F, and then we're going to press enter. As long as we don't get any error messages or permissions not allowed messages or anything like that, then it should have saved on the system. And then we're going to type exit, E, X, I, T, and then we're going to press enter. That's going to give us a login line to take us back to the minor overview. Now NiceHash's OS default login is NHOS. So we're just going to type NHOS and then press enter. And you can see that returns us back to the minor overview. Now we have a connection status green saying connected. And we have our, our static IP address applied to this system for the ETH1 adapter and that address is the 10.139.199.23. That's specific to our network. Yours is going to be whatever you reserve on the router for the static IP address for the system. Should I show your rig ID information, the device information, but this is all you see on NiceHash OS. That's it. Now, all you have to do is let this run on that system and then you go over to your personal computer, your smartphone app, and from there you log into nicehash.com and then go to your account dashboard and then you should be able to control and monitor this system from that dashboard remotely and that's pretty much all there is to it but all of this is suspended in the ram volatile memory so when the system reboots if you get a lightning strike you get a brownout a blackout a voltage drop shut down to make a hardware change and then restart the system you're going to have to redo this every time. So it might not be a viable long-term solution for everybody interested in using NiceHash OS, but this could get it up and running on your system, on your network, so that you can evaluate it and see if you're on NiceHash OS better versus NiceHash's QuickMiner, HiveOS, or MinerStat, or any of those other mining programs or operating systems. If it's something you want to do long term, then you may need to evaluate how you're going to implement that in your network, whether that's getting DHCP up and running, finding a way to just doing this every time the system reboots. When NiceHash OS starts, the only settings that are reapplied are those that are specifically declared in the configuration file on the USB drive. The rest of the settings are reapplied as default when the system restarts and then it's suspended in the RAM and the operating system runs within the RAM. Hopefully in the future, NiceHash will implement a capability to declare a static IP address in the configuration file so that system owners don't have to do this every time. But for now, this is a workaround that could get you started so that you can get NiceHash OS up and running on your system, evaluate whether it's something you want to utilize long term. So we'll end here doing a ping just to test the network connectivity. So we'll go back to the shell, pressing Control C, then type ping, and we'll ping a website. So we're just going to ping Google. They're a big website. We're just going to let it ping Google five to ten times. When you want to stop the ping, just press Control C again. Then we can see the readout here, the ping statistics. It says transmitted nine packets. Nine packets were received. So we have zero packet loss, which is great. That means we're connected, not losing packets. If you want to check for stability, you can let this ping run even longer, maybe 25 to 100 times. That's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this helps get NiceHashOS up and running on your network as well.